Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. Welcome back to the 6-5 Summit Day 2. We are talking about one of my favorite topics, semiconductors. Okay, maybe it's my favorite topic. And we are diving deep on some important technology that Intel is delivering, not only to its internal design teams, but also to its IFS customers. So with that, I'd love to welcome Ben and Eric. Welcome, first time 6-5. Thanks, Pat. Great to be with you today. Nice to meet you, Pat. We've had some awesome Intel folks here on either the 6-5 podcast, 6-5 summits. Heck, we even had uh, Pat G, who he refers to me as Little Pat, and I refer to him as Big Pat, who kicked off the summit uh, a few years back. And I'm ready to talk about some incredible semiconductor technology. Maybe a great place to start. Uh, uh, maybe, Ben, you can kick this off. Talk about what you do for the company. And then, Eric, uh, you can go afterwards. All right. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, vice president for technology development at Intel, responsible for our technology programs. So we have our technology roadmap. And I'm responsible to make sure that the different programs uh, stay on track and we can deliver to the future. Future is good. Future is important. <clears throat> I'm Eric. Uh, I'm an Intel fellow. Um, I work in the design organization uh, to align the technologies that Ben delivers um, and figure out how we take that technology and develop our next generation products. I love that. You know, many times uh, people forget just how long and it, how long it takes to create uh, a design, take it into manufacturing. But by the way, you're Everybody's working on all the transistors and all the fab technologies uh, uh, along the way. It truly is impressive. So why don't we start, uh, Ben, uh, with you. Uh, one of the big technologies that Intel has been talking about is this uh, concept of backside uh, power delivery. Can you talk about uh, why this is important and how this relates to Moore's Law? Yes, of course. So. Uh, the way we build our chips is we start with the tiniest features, the transistors, and then layer by layer we add wiring to it uh, from tiny wires to slightly less tiny wires. And uh, currently these wires fulfill two, uh, uh, two applications. One is we have the signal wires that uh, connect the transistors with each other and uh, within, within die connection. And we have the power wires that uh, connect uh, the power supply to the transistors themselves. As we scale down the size of the transistors, the wires also have to get smaller and smaller and over time become more and more a bottleneck for the performance and the scaling of the transistors. What uh, backside power delivery is doing is it's taking the power wires from the front side and putting them on the back side of the wafer. This gives us a lot more room for the front side wires to be bigger while still enabling the scaling of the transistors, giving us a lot more performance. And the power delivery is a lot more direct to the transistors, giving us a higher performance in addition. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, Eric. <laughs> Uh, what does this mean to uh, the chip, right? And we've talked about the technology, the backside power delivery, kind of separating the power from the signal. But what does that mean for the chip, the power, the density, uh, and, the, uh, and the performance? So first of all, the backside metal gives us the best possible power delivery scenario we can have on chip. And, and those losses are substantial. And by eliminating those losses, we get lower power and higher frequency. Right, but the second aspect of it is by removing the power from the front side metals, Ben mentioned we get bigger interconnects. Well, we can use those bigger interconnects to improve our frequency, to reduce our switching capacitance, which is save power, um, <clears throat> and enable smaller area all at the same time. Right? You know, to put a little uh, quantitative data into it, you know, we were able to rebuild our core with this technology and get 90% cell utilization, a 30% reduction in power supply losses, and uh, almost a 6% frequency improvement just from a rebuild with no other changes. I love it when you uh, guys talk like that. Um, so there are other ways to do uh, backside power, right? Uh, 
I do a lot of research on Intel, but I, I do a lot of research on, on the industry itself. So I'm curious, it's probably a question uh, for Ben, how does Power Via, Intel's Power Via approach, how's it different from other ways that, that people are approaching this? And why is it better? Yeah, Intel's Power Via is a direct connection to the contact of the transistor from the backside. This gives us a very low resistance path from the uh, from the bumps to the transistors themselves and, and further improving performance. But it also does not go through the lower metal layers like some of the other uh, power backside power delivery solutions that are out, out there. And what this does is it frees up the lower metal layers and does not consume any wiring for power delivery. And as Eric mentioned, this allows us to widen the, the pitch of the lower uh, backend layers. And with this one, we can achieve multiple things. First of all, we get better performance because you have fatter wires and can deliver the signals better. But it also reduces the requirement for very aggressive scaling of those layers. Those, the scaling of those layers, uh, first of all, it's very expensive. And the, the cost we are saving from not being that aggressive more than offsets the cost for actually doing the entire backside power delivery process. And uh, in addition, less scaling also means it's a more stable process and has less risk for yield. No, that's good. And, and you know, um, having been in and around uh, semiconductors for over 30 years, you know, it's funny, I was a was a specker and a buyer of semiconductors for an OEM, worked for a semiconductor company for a long time, and here I am, last 12 years, uh, being an analyst of the semiconductor industry. It really all comes down to delivering PPW for certain workloads, right? And I think as the industry has progressed, there's been more of a focus on specific uh, use case. And I'll direct this question to you, Eric. Are there any specific applications Workloads, use cases where backside power delivery uh, really um, shows its true colors. It's, sure, Pat. Um, with backside power delivery, one of the, the the key things is it delivers performance improvement across all the workloads, but specifically the ones that take high power, the ones uh, that drive um, changes in power consumption in the part. Those would be things like AI, graphics, high performance computing and even gaming. Um, those workloads in particular, uh, uh, backside power truly shines. That's awesome, and, and by the way, that's, that's where the ball's headed. I mean, there's no, uh, there's no doubt in all the research that we do, and it's not just the conversation and you know, the big fireworks that are going out. This is, this is where we need uh, this type uh, of, of, of enablement. So, um, Ben, I understand um, that you've created a, a very special node and a test chip uh, for Power Via to validate all these performance expectations for the workloads that, that Eric talked about. Uh, and I hear uh, you're doing very, very well. And by the way, if I track you on nothing else, it's like five nodes in four years. Um, can you tell us more about the test that you're exceeding expectations on, and maybe talk about some of the results and and the metrics that you're that you're basing that off of. Yes, of course. So when you look forward, the the fourth and fifth node we are uh, delivering Intel 20A, Intel 18A. Uh, those nodes we have two big innovations we're putting in power via and ribbon fed. One thing we wanted to make sure is that we understand and debug the power via process. Uh, ahead of ribbon fat so that uh, we don't have two big problems to solve at the same time. Uh, right. So we created a node where we uh, took our Intel 4 process and added power VR on top. And there were four main items we wanted to get out of this test chip um, and our product-like test chip as well. First, we wanted to make sure we develop the process, uh, get good yield, get good reliability, understand whether there are any shifts in device parametrics and fix those. Uh, so that one uh, we have done successfully with our test chip. Second, as soon as you put backside metals on the chip, 
it does change your abilities to do chip level debug uh, since many of the techniques require to have access from one side. Um, with this test chip, we could uh, validate the new technologies for debug that we have developed and validate that they're working and that we can find design bugs um, and, and also process defects. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, the next item that, that we wanted to make sure is uh, that we understand the thermals. Uh, as soon as you also put uh, wires from both sides of the transistor, we wanted to make sure that the models we have for how thermals behave are accurate and that we can develop and test solutions to address any concerns with thermals. And that also we have done and we have now developed uh, uh, solutions that we can give our customers uh, to, uh, to deal with the thermals uh, on backside power delivery process. Yeah, so a lot of these decisions are all about risk and you know, de-risking power via from 20 angstrom uh, seems like a good idea, but uh, why would we want to combine the two and maybe just not offer them kind of further down the road? I mean, maybe this is an obvious answer, but you know, I have to ask, Ben. Yes, uh, no, the, this is good. The, the fourth item from the list I just mentioned is we wanted to make sure we can demonstrate the intrinsic value proposition of PowerVia. So overall, when you look Separated at it- Separated in a way. Yeah, so okay. if you look at it, both the PowerVia and the ribbon fed provide a significant value proposition that we want to give to our customers as soon as possible. So uh, currently, both of these look very good in our development lines. And um, we, we wanted to make sure that we can de-risk those and make sure both of them are ready, but give both of them to our customers as soon as we can. And uh, overall, what we are seeing is uh, whenever we have a new node, there's a lot of new development, a lot of new IP that we need to develop. And we wanted to make sure that our design partners have the full package so that they design an IP once and can use it for all our Intel 20A and Intel 18A products. No, that's good. I get it now. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, it really does take a village. And, you know, with Intel supporting industry standard uh, EDA tools uh, out there, that translates to having to support uh, special valuable features like backside power. Uh, what what do the architects, the chips, the chip designers out there uh, need to know uh, about it? Is, is the industry ready? Is is it there? Uh, where are we on this map? Maybe that Eric, that's that's for you. Sure. We we have you know full what I'll call basic EDA support from 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 the large vendors today. Um, by no means have we hit the point where it's delivering the absolute best. So we're still working with the vendors to improve. Uh, the performance of the results and the capability of the results. Um, and in a few places, we rely on design methodologies to cover the holes um, in, in the future where we expect tool and EDA vendor optimizations to help us out uh, potentially in things like signal shielding and thermals that Ben had mentioned. There are some opportunities still. But um, with the packages we have today, we're able to leverage the value, the core value of backside metal and power via uh, with the vendor support we have today. I think that's good news. And by the way, I give Intel a lot of credit for the support, increased support of industry standard uh, tools. I can tell you from experience, it, it, it took a lot. It takes many years uh, to to shift uh, to that. And you have to, particularly when, uh, when you want to be a leading uh, foundry, which I, I know IFS uh, wants to be to other companies that might be using different tools. So, um, Let's talk, um, Eric, another uh, question for you. Uh, from an IFS business, so an Intel Foundry business perspective, uh, what is the potential uh, and business potential competitive landscape for PowerVIA? And I know it's got to be hard to, to, to put that all on one feature, <laughs> uh, but, it, but it does seem like it is one of the bigger differentiators that uh, obviously internal Intel designs could take advantage of, but but you know as importantly or even more importantly, uh, IFS customers. Right. Um, 
So when we look we look at a feature like Power Via, first of all, why are customers buying uh, the technology in the first place? Right, it comes down to performance, power consumption, and area. And Power Via really addresses all three of those areas very directly. We get significant improvements in our ability to deliver power and power consumption. We get the frequency improvements that we discussed. And we also are getting you know, significant improvements in areas. This kind of leaves us a note ahead uh, from the results of Power Via uh, versus what competition is offering in the same space. Right? So from a customer perspective, it's delivering on point for what they're looking for. Right? Combined with the EDA support, right, we can deliver a package that enables them to bring this uh, to market with their designs in a quick and efficient manner. I love it. Isn't it funny? Uh, yeah. After 40 or 50 years in this industry, it's like it's PPA. It's always <laughs> been started off with PPA yep. and it's still PPA. We might be doing it differently. We might be measuring a little differently. It might be more systemic. Uh, than at the micronic or subatomic, but it's still all about uh, PPA. I love that. What's old is new. What's new is old. Gentlemen, I've really enjoyed this uh, uh, conversation, but I wanted to hit you up with one, uh, one final question here. Does backside power and gate all around kind of show that Moore's Law isn't dead? Uh, and listen, I, you know, I've been hearing about the death of Moore's Law forever, uh, but I wanted to make sure you're able uh, to weigh in. And, and kind of my my corollary to that is, is what are you thinking beyond these new transistor innovations? And Ben, uh, why don't we start off with you? Yes, Moore's Law is uh, alive and well. And uh, the, um, the, the, the two innovations that we have, Power Via and Ribbon Fed, which is our version of Gate All Around, um, uh, are a critical inflection point for our aggressive five nodes in four years uh, roadmap and getting back to process leadership by 2025. Yeah. <clears throat> From my perspective, right, these are two steps uh, in, a, in an ecosystem to get me to a, um, a trillion FETs in a package. Right? We're looking at 3D constructions, disaggregation, technology optimizations for functions, including memory and power delivery, much like what Power Via and Backside Metal provide. And this is a step on the journey to get there. And we see a good roadmap going forward of technologies like these to get there. Yeah, and coming back to the roadmap that Eric just mentioned, uh, first of all, ribbon fed and power via the innovations we have from that, that will carry us for the next two process node at least. And then we have many very interesting options in our labs. We are testing like CFAT or new channel materials that uh, propel us uh, further going from there. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, it, it's our job to leverage the technology that uh, Ben delivers now and into the future. And, and we're doing that through several methods. Um, including taking the new technologies and combining them with old technologies or specialized technologies, right? So one of the things I'll highlight is specialization, whether it's memory, power delivery, those kinds of things are becoming a larger role and Ben is enabling these features for us. Each generation, something new is being added, particularly with Power Via, it's a power delivery technology, but he's gonna give us more magic in the future. That's what we need. Just more magic to get us uh, to get us forward here, and it is so funny. Uh, I'm, I'm just always astounded at the amount of research, uh, the amount of engineering hours that go into making this happen. And listen, every every decade, I hear that oh, we've hit a wall, right? But somehow, the industry, through sheer brilliance, a tremendous amount of of investment, keeps moving it forward because. The success, the industry success, and quite frankly, Intel's success is paramount uh, to the future of, of, of all of these innovations. Uh, I, you know, for one, love to see all the competitive foundry capabilities uh, bringing uh, uh, brought to the table. And I'm not confused at, at how much investment that takes. Uh, how different that takes to be able to serve different types of customers uh, for IFS, and obviously to you know to serve a really big IFS customer, the internal Intel design teams uh, happens to be a an important one uh, as well. So it's good to see Intel bringing out 
some very demonstrable and differentiated technologies. I've been aware of PowerVIA, I think, going on four to five years now. And that's just how long. I mean, you didn't even just start this. They started a lot longer. And it's just it, it's a almost like a miracle that some of these uh, technologies uh, come to the table. Ben and Eric, I just want to thank you again uh, for coming on the 6.5 Summit uh, 2023 Day 2 and really making this program more exciting. You know I love semiconductors. Our audience loves semiconductors, and we love doing the double-click, learning about new technologies like backside power through uh, Intel PowerVIA. So thanks again for coming on. Yeah, and thanks for having us, uh, Pat. It was great to talk to you uh, about PowerVIA and, and what the future brings. Yeah. Yes, Pat, it was an absolute pleasure. Love to have you back on uh, to learn more about it, maybe even do a victory lap as we get uh, closer to uh, full production. Sounds like a great plan. So I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning into this segment of the 6.5 six, Summit, Day 2 Semiconductors, and we are just absolutely doing a double click on cool technology, backside power uh, delivered by uh, power via an Intel. Uh, we are hopeful as an industry that it will deliver tremendous benefit to not only Intel semiconductors, but also its IFS customers. So hey, stick around. We're gonna be talking a lot more semiconductors here in day two. If you missed day one, it's okay. It's uh, it's on record, it's on time, time lapse. Go back and check it out. And also check out day three, because we're going to be interviewing uh, companies that are the most relevant in the technology industry and their executives. So take care. Thanks again.